So we're going to make a couple of pieces of jewellery today and I'm going to use these, uh, this little piece of UV glass that we found in Pit and Weem for a Christmas video and uh, this little spatter glass piece that we also found in Pit and Weem and I'm going to make some pendants with these. I also have a couple of uh, smaller pieces we found in Pit and Weem and I'm going to make a bracelet with that. And uh, for the UV glass, Craig's going to talk about that a little later and you'll find out how it's made and where it's from. What you need to know is that UV glass is really, really rare to find and one in every 3,500 pieces is UV. So it's a really rare find. And we're going to put another couple of pieces uh, as pendants on our Etsy shop. So let's get started. My trusty jump ring opener, if you don't know what it is, check out our video about jump ring openers. So I've already pre-drilled these um, and we'll attach the uh, bales now. the lovely bracelet made with the pieces from Pit and Weem and the pendants with the UV glass and the spatter glass are also made now. All we need to do now is put a lovely chain on them.
We didn't do a roundup when we were at the uh, tea the other day, so I'm going to show you some of the pieces that we found and we'll make something with those as well. So you saw us finding these tiles and I'm going to make two pairs of earrings with these. Um, there was this little fairy hat we found. There's our half stopper. It's this lovely piece of lavender glass. And the fish. Also found a bit of coral, which is quite unusual. And a couple of pieces of milk glass that I really like. Let's find a few agates. Just the white ones this time. There's this intriguing piece of bone. We also found quite a few pieces of really chunky sea glass. Remember me shouting, pirate glass. That's the pirate glass there. We found this huge piece, uh, the embossed piece. We might make a big pendant with it. I think it's got a really nice shape. So that's our pieces from the tea. I'm looking through them, trying to decide which one to to use for some pendants. And I noticed that we found a couple of bottlenecks as well. So I'll show you what they look like. Is it all a little bit different from one another? So this piece is just the partial top of a bottleneck. I think it might make a really quirky pendant. This is a bottleneck with an inside screw, and these are our tops of bottlenecks. So there's some really lovely pieces here and there's this kind of squarish looking one we're gonna make that into a pendant and there's this really nice white one it's got a curve like a kind of weave. Use that. Some of these are quite chunky um, and they're a little oddly shaped so we'll put them in a jar with a couple of lights on. No, there's a wee piece there. I also found this piece and it has a maker's mark on the bottom, which is really quite rare to find. This one has a little crown and I can just make out the partial or bro for brothers uh, and a number nine there. So we'll see if we can make that into a wee pendant. Last but not least, if you remember the uh, cat bum piece from uh, Pit and Weem. Uh, it's all clean now and that'll also become a pendant. So look out for these in our Etsy shop for the next shop update. <laughs>
Now let me know, can you see the fish? Now the cat's bum. a picture of that. So just as I was finishing the earrings the battery died so we quickly changed the battery pack so you can see a lot of roundup so I've made these little studs they're really quirky too. So we've got a pair of studs, we have a fish necklace, we have a white mermaid tail necklace, a seafoam weave necklace, you can wear that on either side and we have this white kind of weave necklace and we have this kind of half moon shaped sea foam uh, necklace with a kind of coral shaped bail and we also have the cat's bum and I'm gonna call it that <laughs> it's this uh, bracelet with the sea glass from Pit and Ream. All these pieces, except for this one, were found on the tea. And these pieces are all uh, from Pit and Ream. This white piece is really cute. It has a little bit of uh, kind of baby blue on the side. So it's a mix of uh, sea glass, pottery, and there's a bit of milk glass there. It's been quite a busy day today. And uh, this is what we've made. And I've still got to make a couple of other pendants here and I'll make these tomorrow. Hope you liked uh, jewellery making. See you next time. Bye. Back in September we published a video looking at lavender glass and we spoke about the use of manganese in glass making. Manganese oxide was used because it created clear glass, giving it the name glassmaker's soap. Without manganese or some other decolorizer, glass has a naturally greenish tone. Manganese also has the effect of colouring glass purple. Even small amounts will eventually turn glass purple if the glass is exposed to UV light. Over the thousands of years that glass has been produced, many different elements have been used and added to clarify, colour or to give glass some other quality. Green glass, for example, is created by adding iron or chromium oxide to the mix. Even gold has been used to colour glass. Just a little gold produces a beautiful cranberry colour. Use a little more and the glass will become a rich red colour. Similar reds can be achieved using a copper tin mix or by using selenium. Though again, there are some subtle and more dramatic differences in the shades and depth of colours that are achieved using the different metallic oxides. Due to taste, cost, availability and other things, we find some kinds of glass much more commonly than we do others. Today, I want to say a little bit about one of the rarer kinds of glass that we find. Glass that looks like this is generally called uranium glass, but it can be known by a few other names such as UV glass or Vaseline glass. It's most common to find this glass with a very particular yellowish green colour. It's very distinctive and it looks just like this. The yellowish aspect of the colour is achieved by adding very small oxidised amounts of the radioactive material uranium. The greener the glass appears, the more likely the iron oxide is present in the mix. 
If you find a piece like this and you're not sure if it is uranium glass, a black light torch will let you know for sure. The uranium content of the glass reacts dramatically under a black light. It glows so beautifully. Although we tend to see radiation as a bad thing, the amount emitted by uranium glass is generally so small that very few pieces measure significantly above background radiation. In terms of radioactivity, there's not much difference between a banana, a brazil nut and uranium glass. Earliest use of uranium glass dates back surprisingly far. While we can look to the Egyptians for early examples of manganese purple, we find early examples of uranium glass in ancient Rome. Uranium glass as we know it now though really took off in the late 1800s and continued to be very popular through to the 1940s. Many other manufacturers produced uranium glass and they continued to innovate and proliferate the colours and styles available. One notable technique that was developed around the turn of the 20th century was the addition of other materials that resulted in crystallisation during tempering of the glass. The resulting glass has an opaque appearance. I'm tempted to say it looks a little like milk glass, but it's quite distinctive. Although the height of uranium glass's popularity had passed by the advent of the Cold War, production in some parts of the world stopped altogether. In the US, for example, uranium became a restricted substance that became more or less limited to military experimentation and development. Many suggest that the regulation of uranium marked the end of uranium glass production, though production started up again in 1958 when restrictions over uranium were lifted. We know that some pieces were actually produced as recently as the year 2000, though we're not aware of anyone who is still making uranium glass today. It is such a remarkable and unique material, and it's just an incredibly cool thing to see it glow under black light. We love it. Even a tiny piece of it makes a great find. And today's was a lovely wee Christmas treat for us. Thank you.